So the hotel overbooked and ended up putting us in this, you know, massive suite here. This is just one of the rooms they, they gave us in this other room. But I wanted to show you this because they, in, in Europe, a lot of times, they post the price of the room in the room. I wanna show you guys this, check this out. The Shangri-La Paris, 2200 euros a night. What's up guys, Travis Stevenson coming back to you today with a little bit of a different video. This one's for all of my travel hackers. This one's for everybody who's looking for a really cool, easy and cheap, sort of sneaky way to get some really cool rooms. Now, I've been a travel junkie for the last like six years, ever since I started traveling and uh, got hooked up with American Express early on, started using that for my business. I spend a ton of money in my business from Facebook ads to developers, you name it. I try to use my American Express for everything. Now, that led me to using their travel platform to actually book some of my trips. In this video, I wanna show you one little travel hack that I've gotten from American Express Travel that I think everybody should use, and it cut the room rate from a really nice hotel from about $2,400 down to $1,200 per night. Let's take a second, hop over to my TV over here. I'm gonna walk you through exactly what it is. It's like a five minute hack, but it literally has saved me at this point, tens of thousands of dollars using this little weird trick that if you don't know, uh, you can't use it, but when you know it, it's just so freaking simple. So let's head over and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so before I get too deep in this video, let me first explain the story on how I found this little hack, I guess. I was using Amex Travel to book uh, hotels when I was traveling over to Europe. I was going to Paris and uh, went to Ireland and uh, Amsterdam. So I was using their platform to book hotels and it looks something like this. As you can see, you log in and it tells you like the average nightly rate or whatever, shows you a bunch of pictures and it was a really nice way to be able to look at multiple hotels at the same time. It's kind of like an Expedia or Travelocity kind of thing, but they get you better pricing and this was the major benefit. So when you're, when you're looking at an actual listing, if it's in there, fine hotels and resorts, which means it's like a preferred vendor, they give you certain benefits. And this one right here literally is the key to this whole thing. The very first one, if it's a fine hotels and resort, you get a room upgrade upon arrival. So this actually kind of happened to me by accident. I, I actually booked this hotel. It's the Shangri-La in Paris. We were going to Paris. I wanted to stay at a nice hotel. So we booked the Shangri-La. I booked a room that was gonna cost me about 1100 a night. Now, don't judge me, I like to stay in nice places, okay? I spring for big trips instead of a lot of trips. We had a, a, our daughter with us, so we wanted her to have an additional room. So we got a, a room that had like a little living room type section. It was about $1,100 a night. Well, what's crazy, I didn't realize this, but when they, when they set up rooms, if you look at Amex, when they set up rooms, they have some similar rooms, but they have levels. It's pretty clear that they have different levels. So like right here, you've got a superior room that's got two twins and a superior room that's got one king. They're the same price. Now here's what a lot of you don't realize. When you're booking a room like this, if I book the two twins, that's 1213. If there's an available upgrade, I'll only get bumped up to this one, which is exactly the same rate. But if you look, if I book this king, I'd get upgraded to this deluxe two twin, but they won't usually upgrade you to a twin. They'll usually upgrade you to the next king, which then goes to a deluxe room single king, right? So this is what actually happened to us. We booked a room that was probably somewhere around this price point right in here, um, and they didn't have any of these rooms available. Uh, we asked them, hey, do you have uh, an upgrade available? And they said, yes, we do, but it's, you know, they were like, oh, let me see, and they called somebody. Well, they ended up upgrading us and hopefully I have some footage of this, and if we do, we'll insert it right here. This is ridiculous, right? No, it's a mess right now because we've, we're on a 14 day trip, and so this is this, the second piece of the room. This is the first piece with the daughter right there, but you can see like, like, I mean, just huge, and there's a, like a whole bunch of closet space in here, and this is the third section of the room, which goes into like the bedroom, or the bathroom, huge closet space. Pretty incredible. So I got upgraded from an $1,100 a night room to like a $2,400 a night room, all because I booked using Amex, which is huge. Amex Travel makes it freaking 
super easy for this to work, but uh, because they didn't have anything in the middle available. So the big key to this, and I figured this out over time, I've kind of refined it, was to book the highest level that you can. A lot of hotels have, and this is a, a better example, when we traveled to Park City, Utah, they had, it was, it was a snow type of hotel, and they had Mountain View, and then they had like Valley View. So if you book the Valley View, which might be like 60 bucks less than a Mountain View, in my mind, most of the time I'm thinking, I don't care if I have Mountain View or Valley. But if they're gonna upgrade you to another level, that mountain view is the next level. So let's say I check in, I, I got a valley view, and they're like, oh, hey, you got an upgrade. They'll upgrade me to the king, the same room, but it faces the mountain. If I had paid the extra 60 bucks to get the mountain view, which I don't really care about, usually the next level is like a junior suite. So what you wanna do is you wanna book the room that's underneath the biggest gap in price. So like, you know, if you're considering this room, it's $13.76 a night. For an extra $105 a night or so, you could get this terrace room. So to me, the way that I book mine is I book the terrace room because I know that my next upgrade is basically $200 more than the room rate that I'm paying here. Or if you're willing to go to $1,650, there's an $1,800 room up. But this is another good example. You don't wanna get the, uh, or I guess if you have a king, it's fine. Same price, the next upgrade is this one. So again, this actually is a really good example. If you were willing to pay $1,800 a night for your room, right here, if they upgrade you, you're only getting an $1,860 a night room. Whereas if you just spring for the extra $53 a night or whatever it is, then you'd be upgraded to this 1,900. Now, it does become a slippery slope if you realize, well, you know, I could go up 60 here and then I'm only 60 away from the next one. You don't have to fall into that trap. But pay attention to the upgrade upon availability option. Because worst case scenario, they don't upgrade you. You still get like, uh, most places give you hotel credits, um, like a $100 credit, which is really cool, and free breakfast at most places. If you do get upgraded, it's happened to me about, I would say 40 to 50% of the time that I travel, they end up upgrading us to another room. The best example of it so far was at the Shangri-La in Paris, epic trip. You know, we booked a room that was kind of like, this is the bare minimum we want to stay in. Still a really nice room, uh, but they ended up upgrading us to like a massive suite. Pay attention to those room rates. Um, the more you're willing to swing, the better off your upgrade's gonna be. And here's kind of one of those top level examples. This room is $2,300 a night, right? Not saying that any of us are gonna be booking that room anytime soon, but if they had the available upgrade, you would go up to a $3,200 a night room. That's $900 in price difference. That's a huge, huge difference. This is a big Eiffel Tower suite with like two stories. This is another beautiful one, but it doesn't have the views. This is absolutely one of my favorite little hacks to use. Thank you American Express for having this because not only do I get insane points, uh, for what I spend my money on. And I'll do another uh, video in the future talking about what my favorite business credit cards are. So make sure you guys subscribe and like this video if you guys wanna hear more about that. I have paid for multiple of my trips almost entirely using points. And you guys can probably even see here, I'm already at 880,000 points and I used points to go to Park City from Hawaii and fly Hawaii to Florida round trip within the last six months. I'm at 880,000 points. I can tell you guys how you can maximize your points, which credit cards give you the most of these, and what the best use of your points actually is, not to put them on hotel rooms, but instead to put them on something else. I'll share all that stuff with you guys, stuff that I've learned over the last, like, I've had Amex since 2012, so nine years. Uh, of using their platform, but then also using other credit card platforms, other banking platforms. And when you're growing your digital business, you're gonna be spending money to do it. So you might as well get the most return out of it possible. I'm hoping to share some of those hacks with you guys. If you enjoyed, leave me a comment. Make sure you guys subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.